Welcome to the CEO Pulse Podcast, where you get the real, the raw, and the mind of entrepreneurship. Today, we have my good friend here, Max Jimenez. He's the owner partner of Max Cash Offers and also uh, Real Estate Disruptors with uh, Steve Trank. So yes, sir. glad to have you, bro. Thanks for being, uh, being on the show. I appreciate you. Thank you that you invited me. I know we've been talking about, you know, maybe doing one of these together. So finally it came, it came, it came about, right? <laughs> I know, dude, we yeah. go, we go, uh, we go way back and, and it's, it's pretty cool to, to see everything that you've been able to create through the years. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, that, so, so you have a, I love your story. Uh, you definitely have the entrepreneur spirit uh, and you're, you're, you're the definition of, 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 I mean, of, I think of what it takes to, to make it um, from the ground yeah. up. So, so um, right, right. I think we share we share a lot of similarities, uh, besides right. the Spanish, uh, and uh, <laughs> yeah, man. So let's dive in. Tell us about tell uh, tell yeah, us about cool. your entrepreneur journey, your story, and 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 how you got started. Yeah, no, that's cool. I actually want to give you a quick story before I get started. There, I was talking to my because uh, we have our morning huddle uh, today, so I was talking mm -hmm. to my acquisition guy Ruben, which you know, and yeah. so uh, he's like, "Hey, Super I see cool that you have a yeah, I see that you have a podcast on uh, on." today at 12 with the Raphael and I said yeah because they all see my calendar right because we share calendars and stuff so in case they got to book appointments and uh I said yeah and, and I started telling the story that I knew you before I knew everybody before I knew Steve before I knew Jesse so he's like really that's crazy I said yeah I used to when I got started I used to call him I used to call Raphael and get tests when he was available obviously that's but those times you're really busy so I just thought I'd share that story with you he was he was kind of in shock right that I knew you before everybody else <laughs> not too many people know that actually it's crazy <laughs> and we do go way back you started your your background is not i mean you came from from uh from a regular nine to five and right. and i remember one of our first conversations you you told me about that you told me that you were working um and you were doing construction at the time correct yeah 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 yeah, yeah time, i did it's tough yep, at uh, that it's time tough pennies, man. It, yeah. yeah i did uh, i did construction back in and you know, when I was first uh, getting started, it was one of the things that I that I reverted to, just you know, to make a uh, a regular you know paycheck, and and right, right. it gets tough, man, to mitigate that stuff, and then also you know keep the 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 dream alive of, of you know Correct. doing something yeah, on yeah. your own. So, oh yeah, it's definitely tough, man. I think uh, I posted something on my Instagram a couple of days ago about that. Right, it's an old picture of me wearing my hard hat vest. And so I was actually already, I, I was still working on my job and then, st and then I was still trying to make the real estate business side go. And so in my mind, you, and, and that's the hardest part, right? I think in your mind, you visualize and you see what your potential is and where you want to be at. But, and I, and, and one of the things I said in there was that your physical realm hasn't, hasn't, it hasn't happened yet. So that's always the hardest struggle. And especially in a position like that, right. Where you're working construction. I mean, Summertime hours were from like, you know, uh, 3.30 a.m. wake up to sometimes 3 p.m., you know, getting home, you know, because I, yeah. I moved up pretty quick in the ranks. So I was kind of the right hand man. And we run we run huge projects. Uh, you if I name some projects, you would be able to recognize them here in, here in Arizona. Uh, you know, so but definitely it's it's it, it, it was a difficult thing to do. But I knew that that wasn't something I want to do forever. So I made it work, you know, through, and the hours that I wasn't working, I would do it after work, you know, whether that was, you know, doing letters in my kitchen table, which we'll talk a little bit about that more, you know, as we get into this, you know, and putting out bandit signs, stuff like that. But it's definitely tough. And, you know, but I think it comes back to if you know where you want it, it, in your mind, if you have a vision of where you want to go, you know, and where you want to be at, you have to break, break through that. Right. And not give up. And I think that's where a lot of people do give up. Is that they visualize and they see it, but yet it hasn't for, it hasn't come to uh, fruition in the in the physical realm. So they end up giving up, mm. you know. Yep, they end up mm. getting discouraged. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Keeping that keeping that dream alive and that vision alive above anything else. Um, yeah, yeah, it can be tough, man. It can be tough, which uh, kind of uh, throws me into into um, uh, the first question, which is when you have when you when you have that feeling of doubt and you have that uh, you know that the best I can, you know, the best word that I can use for it is fear because I mean, we do right. get tackled by here on a regular base uh, by fear on a regular basis. Um, right. How do you mitigate it? How do you, what's your process to manage, you know, something like that, especially now that uh, if I want to put, I mean, I want to paint a little bit of a, a little context into, into the picture. So now um, you have a very successful uh, wholesale real estate um, operation. Uh, you, you're right. also um, owner partner in real estate disruptors, which is a movement. Right. Steve Trang is, yep. is, uh, 
uh, you know, right. running the podcast and, and all that stuff. But it's, it's both of you in, in the project and you guys are changing lives on a regular basis. Um, yep. You guys are coaching. So you guys are making a big, big, big impact. And it's not just, yep. you know, citywide or, or countywide or statewide. It's nationwide. Um, yeah, right. So and it's serving two different purposes. One is inspiration motivation mm -hmm. which is i think it's it's one of the you know one one of the keys but also right. you guys are provi uh, providing a lot of um, um instructional knowledge uh yeah. how to's and and step by step kind of stuff and you give away right. content like crazy um as far as <laughs> strategies and yeah. and you know how you tell your competitors quote unquote how to uh how to beat you on deals and how to you know yeah. how to become better which is which is i mean right, right. it's uh it's amazing on all its own now, with that being said, how do you, um, what's your process of getting over the threshold of fear? Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that's a great question. Um, for me personally, so when, and, and I'm going to kind of put this in a story a little bit. So I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't have an understanding of what entrepreneurship meant. Um, I, I just knew I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to work. I wasn't the best employee when it came to people telling me what well, <laughs> you know, so that's a lot of us entrepreneurs, right? Like, uh, you know, but when it came to the part of doing work, uh, you know, I, I treated every single job where I work at as my business, but it's just, I wasn't the best employee. So I, um, I came to a point, the reason why I got into construction, I came to a point where I didn't know what to do. I had no direction. I didn't know what vehicle to take. My stepdad's been in commercial plumbing for, uh, all his life. Right. So he worked for a really great company and I said, okay, well at this point I'm at a road, I'm at a roadblock. And this was probably about four and a half years, maybe five years before I found out about wholesaling, right? Real estate. And so I was already, I was working in that field for that long. Uh, but something clicked like a year and a half to two years before that. Like, you know, I guess it was more of, do I really want to do this? And, and so a couple of things happened. I moved up pretty quick, you know, because uh, it, I work really well. And so I became the right hand man for the foreman that I was working with. So me and him stuck together for those four and a half years. And the, what click was like, I would look at him cause we were right in the, in the work truck and he was making, I don't know, 30 bucks an hour, 32 bucks an hour, which is a good decent amount of money, right? For some works hourly. Um, and I was making 20, I want to say I was making about 24 or 20, 23 or 24 bucks an hour. I've only had been doing it for five years. So he was in the, he was in the trade for, you know, 20 some years making 30, whatever dollars an hour. I've been in the trade for five years making 23, 24. And I look at him and so I'm thinking like, man, is this where I'm going to be? Is this where gonna, is this going to, is this my end all be all? So my, my desire to be, do something better clicked. Right. And so I started scrambling. And so, uh, you know, like I said, I've always wanted to do something. I just don't want, didn't know what. And that's when I found out about uh, wholesaling, which was through our mutual, uh, you know, um, acquaintance, John Terry. So I got into that that way. Uh, but one of the things, you know, speeding this up to your question is, um, you know, it took a lot of uh, pro uh, reprogramming. And that's what that's one of the things that helps that that's going to help anybody that's listening or anybody that's going through that phase right now where they're not seeing believing in the in the physical realm. And what I mean by that is when I found out about wholesaling and obviously I got into it, I read a lot. I went to that event, right, which was in October of 2015. For the next six months, what I did was I turned off all I turned off the TV, I turned off all the music, and in my car, all you had, all I had was podcasts, was uh, audiobooks. I would get home and watch webinars. I would read. So what I need, and that's what helped me, right? And, and is shifting my mindset to know that all this work that I'm putting is not in vain, right? Something's going to happen, which I didn't know, right? Like at that time, I wasn't thinking like that. All I knew was that the only way for me to overcome this and make this, you know, uh, make this but in the physical form is that I needed to reprogram my thinking and my mindset obviously faith and all that comes into play too right because you know I, I'm, I'm a big believer in faith and uh but also you need to program yourself and i think that's what helped me is that i blacked out all the tv uh, you know tv movies and tv and my wife was like are we listening to that again that podcast in the car right <laughs> that was she, they're, they're, they're getting already annoyed right flip to freedom you know you remember sean's intro right <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, um, so what's up, what's up, what's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, what's up? And so basically that, that helped me to get over that fear, knowing that what I'm doing is not really translating into anything yet, but based on everything I'm hearing, based on everything I'm learning, it, it's, it's going to happen, right? Eventually. 
And so for me, it took about 10 months before 11 months, something like that, before I got my first deal, you know? Um, but that's kind of how I got over the fear. I had to reprogram myself, rewire myself. My men, the mindset, man, is huge. Definitely. Dude, that's huge. Uh, so, so, um, so this is what I'm hearing, right? You, so you went to, um, you got the awareness of something that could, you know, potentially be a tool or take you to a better right. place, right? Yeah, and yeah. you got, um, uh, the, the first thing that came to mind was, uh, I had another previous episode with uh, Evil Dragonoff. I think it was episode number four or three. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, um, and we were talking about being obsessed. That's his whole yeah. thing, like be obsessed right. or be right. average. And there's nothing wrong right. with being average, but entrepreneur, um, you know, minded people, are, they don't think that way. They think of, yeah, no, you know, we think of crushing not. it and we think of, you know, just you know, doing better and increasing and doing, you know, what's the next, leveling up on a regular basis. And, yeah. and his, you know, the whole thing on that conversation was get obsessed or, or be yeah. average. He goes, I don't want to be average. And the guy is far <laughs> from average. The guy's a yeah, no, rock know. star, right? Yeah, he's a machine, um, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, props to evil. And, um, but, but I mean, that's, I think that's, uh, that's one of the biggest uh, things or, or commitments to take, right? To get obsessed about something that you really want to create, to get obsessed right. about something that you have no idea how it's going to come to fruition. You have, you know, yep. you don't know what it's going to look like, but I guarantee yep. you, I guarantee you that if you were to go back to 2015, um, you, I don't, I don't think you would have the clear picture of where you're at right now. Um, so maybe, no, maybe a vague, you know, maybe an idea of, okay, cool. I want to do this, this and that kind of like action plan in place, but yeah. Life, life throws, um, you know, nuggets at you when, when you're, when you put yourself in that space and, and you put yourself yeah, yeah. on the track of achievement. Um, Correct. Yeah. and it's, it's pretty cool to see that you got obsessed for, for six months and it wasn't, it wasn't uh, what for another 11 months until you got your first deal. So like the first proof of it, um, was right. it after? So, so, so your so first deal came, what, a, a year, year later, year and a half so later? I went to the, yeah, well, it came about, it came about 11 and a half months. So I went to the event mm -hmm. in October, 2015. And then, um, you know, I, I didn't really do a lot because it was towards the end of, you know, the holidays and stuff. I was still doing a little bit of, you know, reading and kind of going to the meetups because they were here locally. But it, mm -hmm. when, when the new year came in January, I took off, like I started taking action. I was like, okay, it's, it's enough. I'm going to take some action even though I was still, you know, listening to podcasts and everything. So my deal, so I started taking action like around January of 2016 and I didn't, I didn't get my first deal until the end of that. So like around October. Uh, but, uh, so that, 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 you know, it was kind of, yeah, it was almost a year from the time I went to that event, you know, pretty much until I got my first deal. Yep. Wow, man. I see people fall, you know, fall off the wagon, you know, two months into it get you yeah. know, just heartbroken and, and have no, yeah. so, I mean, you combine really the obsession of, of wanting to be better than desire with faith. I mean, it's yeah, like yeah. classic Napoleon Hill kind of stuff, but, yeah. but I, that's what it takes, especially when you're, when you're branching out. And then, yeah. um, I mentioned earlier you know, that, that I, I do, I do want to add something really quick. Obviously, you know, not only the re times you have to surround yourself with like-minded individuals mm -hmm. that are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, positive to what you're believing. Cause I did get discouraged. There was a couple of times where, you know, you know I, I, I locked up two deals, but nothing ever happened. You know, obviously I didn't know really what I was doing, but I was still taking action. Like I locked one up and I think I referred to uh, Brandon, right? You guys, mm -hmm. and he's like, he, he, uh, he calls me back and he's like, oh, this one's, uh, we, you got it locked up too high. He goes, we need to renegotiate the deal, right? Because I didn't know how to comp or anything. I'm like, I got a deal, bro. Let's move it. Let's get it sold. And so when I went back to the seller to tell him, you know, hey, we need to lower the price or renegotiate. I, I got the seller got really pissed off at me, right? He got really mad and upset. So I was like, okay, this thing's not working for me. And then I got another deal, uh, which I locked up, but then it just, I, that didn't happen either. So at that point, I'm like, man, is this really so? And it was, was that I got my family involved as well too. So like my, my wife would help me in the afternoons, my kids would help me and they would see me working this hard. And at, and, and after a couple of, you know, of those episodes that happened, I'm like, man, I wonder if this is something that I should keep doing. And my wife's like, Hey, listen, you've been working really hard. You guys, you've been putting a lot of time. We've been helping you, you know, it's not time to give up. And I had my father-in-law as well, encourage me a little bit, you know what I mean? Like lift me up, like, Hey, you know what? You got to do this for your family. So I got back on and I started hustling again, you know? And, and I think that's a, 
not to say that I never got discouraged, right? Or not to say that I never wanted to give up, but I had my moments, but I had, the one thing that helped me is the right people were around me to lift me up. I never had anybody, you know, um, be negative in a way to say, okay, this is not going to work. You should just quit. Right. Uh, so that's the great thing about it. That's the great thing that helped me, you know, is that I had those around me to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Have uh, the, so a solid support structure. Um, yeah, that, that, yep. that's huge. And, and that can come in many, you know, many, many different forms. I mean, it can come of course, as you know, relatives, family, yeah, yeah. you know, brother, right. sister, wife, kids, even, um, when uh, when all else fails, I mean, we still have the inspiration of books and looking into Correct. you know coaches and mentors. So there's been people who have made huge huge impact in my life, and mm -hmm. they're not related to me. However, they've been there, you know, when, yeah, when yeah. key moments through through the journey, right? Yeah, yeah, um, no, definitely. So I I, uh, I, I was mentioning before that uh, we uh, we do we have a lot of similarities, meaning yeah. that. Um, that uh, you know, one of the one of the things that I've always kind of kind of connected with you on was that the fact that it, you you said you jumped right into reprogramming. So you actually yeah. had to wrap your head around something else other than, other than the reality that you you already knew, right? Correct. Um, yep. I, I I completely you know feel you on that. Um, I had to reprogram my head, and that's you know a lot of times that's a lot you know it's, it's eighty percent harder than the actual struggle or the actual battle or the grind and, and the hustle, right? Right, right. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so it's it's huge, man. I, I, um, I uh, you know, pr props to you because it's it's uh, it's not something easy. One to uh, to be willing to change something uh, yeah, yeah. when it's not working. Right. To realize that, all right, yeah. cool. Um, step outside of the ego and then look at, you know, uh, things from a, from a um, subjective sa standpoint and see what we can actually change. And, and if we need to pivot, if we need to, to change something within ourselves, uh, just Correct. making that yeah. decision to do it sometimes is the hardest thing. So, No, it is because the problem is that most of us uh, a lot of times don't realize, I guess, uh, the hardest thing is to assess yourself, right? And to say like, you know, uh, you need in order for you to do this, you need to adjust this, right? Because like, we don't like to criticize ourselves or we don't like to tell ourselves like we need to change in certain areas, right? Uh, and But a lot of times we do in order to, you know, fulfill or get to that next point, right? To, or or anything great is not gonna come easy. You have to look at yourself and, and say, okay, you need to do this, you need to, you know, within yourself. And that's hard for people to do. And that's why a lot of, a lot of people don't do it and they give up. Yeah, well, it, it it's also I mean the key to resilience I think because when you have when you have that strength that inner strength to realize that, all right, cool, this is not what I want. I can do something about it. I have the awareness, the power, and I can shift my my yeah. uh, my behaviors and habits to do something else, and, and actually have the strength to do it. Uh, when you hit mm -hmm. with um, with um, you know hard things along the path, it, it's you're gonna have that much power to overcome them. I think, Correct, especially yeah. as an entrepreneur, man, how many, how many times have you been up here and then it's, it's 8 a.m. And then by 10 a.m. You're like way over here <laughs> and, and yeah, then it's, it's, yeah. it's 1130 and then you're, you're woo, way over here again. So it's, it's crazy. Like you got to have the, no. resi the, uh, the resiliency to do uh, just, you know, oh, man, to have definitely. that emotional intelligence in place. Yeah. Definitely. So, well, I mean, especially if you want to see success, that's huge, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. For sure. So, What's your, what's your definition of an entrepreneur? Well, do you think entrepreneurs are born? Do you think entrepreneurs are made? Uh, well, I mean, you know, um, they're definitely for me, they're not born. Um, there is definitely some set of skills that you're born with, I guess. Right. Um, that you can capitalize on and, and eventually drive you a lot farther than some people. Uh, I used to have the idea. So I want to, uh, I used to have the idea that an entrepreneur was just somebody who, who for the most part owns their own business. Right. Um, and works for themselves. I think that's the general understanding of an entrepreneur. But as you get into this, you know, into the, your career, as you get into the, in the realm of entrepreneurship, it's a lot more than that, right? Uh, for me, anyways, I think entrepreneurship is is finding is a person, individual who who becomes great at finding problems and finding the solutions for those problems, right? And then money mm -hmm. just happens to you know be that that the the tool or just money you get paid for that basically I guess that's what you want to say, um, okay. yeah. But the byproduct of that, so that's kind of what I think entrepreneurship is in, in a nutshell, right? Just somebody that that sees a problem, finds a solution for that problem, and along the way 
they end up making a lot of money for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So what's the, uh, what's the, uh, the problem that you're currently solving? I know you play in real estate, but what, do you, right. what would you say the, the, uh, the problem that you're solving is? So right now with our, with, with, on our wholesale business, so we have this in our uh, VTO, which is traction, right? Uh, uh, it's, uh, the, um, that's where we have like all our, you know, our, our um, what is it called? Our, um, our goals and, you know, our, everything that we have in mind. So one of those core values for us is, is the, the problem that we're solving is finding homeowner solutions. That's the problem that we're solving right now. Uh, so basically homeowners that are, that are in, in, situ, in unique situations, that need to sell their properties quick, right? They don't have a, um, that they can't go on a, a, the traditional route, right? That's the problem mm -hmm. that we're solving right now. We have a solution for that problem. So we're looking for those homeowners. This, on the other side, with real estate disruptors, the, 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 what, the problem that we're solving right now is people that want to get into the business and basically have no background in sales, but need, need, uh, 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 help, right. To develop their sales skills, you know, to develop, you know, business structure. So that's the problem that we're solving right now for individuals that want to get into the entrepreneurship. So, you know. hmm. so opening, opening up the, uh, the gate per se, um, mm -hmm. to, um, to freedom and entrepreneurship. That's, I mean, yeah. I think that's one of the biggest Correct. things that happens in real estate and uh, I'm sorry, in real estate disruptors. And, yeah. and it's, uh, I mean, you guys' meetups are, are like, you know, the top event of the, of the Valley when every time they yeah. hit, um, Correct. and you know, there's, there's, there's hundreds of people that go to them. There's tons of, of knowledge that's just, you know, given out, um, freely mm -hmm. without regard. And, uh, and, <laughs> and, and it comes to show, you know, that, that you, you're, you have the ability to create that culture. You have the ability yeah. to create that kind of pull, that kind of power, that type of Correct. connections, um, yeah, yeah. that, uh, yeah, or that reach when you, right. when you just reprogram yourself, when you start working yeah. and actually put in the work, um, right. onto yourself to improve, to yep. get better, to just, you know, level up and, 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 right. and, uh, overall, um, you know, dedicate your time to find solutions and and push that you know push that forward it, it's it's yeah. uh it's amazing what you guys are doing yeah now, you, know, you know what's interesting about that though is that is is that's a constant thing though like because when you, you obviously every single time that you that you um that you uh what is it called elevate or you know or you know your business you your mindset has to go with that as well too you can't remain right. Like every single step requires another level of, of growth, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I want your listeners to understand that every single every time that you get to a certain level, your growth, growth, you know. And 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 the reason why I'm saying it because lately I've been a lot more money on self development than I ever had, right? It was all the free stuff before it was just YouTube and all that. But definitely, uh, and then as you go develop, as you grow your brand or your business, whatever that is, it's going to demand a lot more from you. Uh, you know, and it's hard when you first get started, it gets a lot harder, man. When you get to a certain level, like yourself where you're at, you know, it, it gets even harder and, and you got how you have to keep that self-development. You have to keep growing. It's not, it, it, it never ends. It never ends. Uh, I, I love that you're saying that, man, because it, it's so true. It's so true. It, you can, um, the way that it was, um, laid out for me was that, um, we have this focal point, right? Like think of a, think about a room. You have this, this, uh, this space, this, and your focus is on one little dot, one little dot in that room, in that square room. And, and that's, you know, that becomes your purpose. That becomes your world. That becomes everything that you know, right? That one little dot. Yeah, you yeah. start working on that, right. working on that, working on that. And then the dot expands, expands, expands. The next thing you know, um, you have to become better. You have to be able to, to fill in. Um, you know, the yeah. bigger space, which, you know, the dot is getting bigger. So now it's, you know, foot, you right, know, foot right, big, right. two feet big, three. Uh, next yeah. thing you know, like you have to, uh, the, the whole thing is covering the room and now you're engulfed in it. What happens yeah. Like you have to grow as a person to one, be able to see that. Yeah. Um, and two, uh, be able to process it, man. And, and, and not get, not get, you know, ran over like a, you know, like it's a train. Um, you but, can't easily get, you can't easily get ran over <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. The, uh, the, uh, one thing that happened to me uh, a while back was that, um, so I, I, I was, I got stuck in a rut like everybody else for a while and it was a mental rut. I mean, professionally everything was good, but I, I, I kind of bogged down 
I kind of bogged down in production. I bogged down on ideas and it's not me. It's not, you know, I'm, I'm not that type of guy. I'm always, right. you know, making up stuff and, and looking for, for, I don't know what, you know, shiny objects per se, but I got bogged down and, um, for a while and, and, and I focused, I, I went back, looked, you know, started focusing on, on my inner self again, doing, you know, right. a personal growth and, and I was able to break through that. Right. So I, I leveled up mentally and I realized, okay, cool. I, the reason this, this whole thing seems like change is because I have, diff, you know, I started to see different problems. I started to see different relationships. I started to see different, you know, just different things come at me, which I wasn't used to. Right. Um, yeah, that's yeah. a sign that you're, you're just simply at another step. You know, it's just another right. step in the, in the staircase. Right, right, right. And, um, yeah. and when I was there and when I realized that I felt so good, I mean, it felt good to realize, all right, cool. I, I um, uh, this is where I'm at. I, I got the awareness that, okay, cool. I'm growing as a person. I'm growing professionally. Everything is, you know, kind of clicking. And I sort of got, I, I, <laughs> I enjoyed it for maybe two weeks when I was thrown into a whole different, you know, um, situation <laughs> where I right. had to for, you know, I, I had to level up again, like go to that yeah. next step. And it's just yep, continuous, yep. man. You, you, you yeah. tweak that. If, if, um, if you're too comfortable for too long, I mean, I, I don't know, to me, it's, it's, uh, it's not a good sign. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it's not, it's not a good sign. Uh, there was a picture I, um, I, uh, I have, I can't remember where I got it from, but it's this thing. It's this guy that's got, so he's got the uh, hands up like this and the chains are, and then he's tied up with chains, right? And the chain goes over his head, but then right over that, it's a double-edged sword. And so it, mm. it's broken. The double-edged sword is still sticking up. And on the bottom, it says, do not celebrate too long. You don't know what the next second is going to hold. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I at said, least story of my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, and don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I, I by all, you know, of course, we all want to enjoy the wins, right? Like right, track yeah, the yeah. wins and, and count them and, you know, count them as blessings yeah. and, and actually take time right, to right, take right. those in. But, um, you know, with that being said, I, I, I don't think we're in the, in the stage of our lives where we just want to completely get comfortable. And yeah. I mean, to me, no, that's retirement. Not. And, and yeah. like, I have a lot of ideas that I want to crush before I get there. So yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, through that. what has, yeah. What has been your biggest aha moment, uh, throughout your, your journey? The biggest aha moment, um, is, you know, for me, um, is knowing that, you know, obviously my background, I've never, you know, I, I dropped out of high school when I was 15 years old. Right. And I started working with my, uh, with my cousin, he's always had his business. I think that's where I got my work ethic from. Right. Because he was a person that, you know, even though he was my cousin, my older cousin, uh, he was a cool guy, but when it came time to work, Holy smokes, man, he, he transformed into like this guy that I never knew who he was because it was his business. Right. So at the end of the day, so I, uh, and the reason why I bring that up because I've never had any like training as far as how to own a business and things like that. So, my biggest aha moment for me is, is, is being able to say like, I can definitely, my, I, I knew that I had leadership skills, but I didn't know I had them to a level to until about two years ago. Right. I started, you know, developing on my, on, on the business side. And that kind of woke me up a little bit because now I understood that not only did I have the work ethic, but now I also had the leadership skills to be able to run a team, run a team effectively and that comes with growth, right? I think uh, sometimes, and, and the reason why it was an aha moment for me is because I always had that doubt, right? Like why, you know, do, even though that's one of my things, like my work ethic, my work ethic is, is, is kind of something that I don't think is unmatchable, but the aha moment for me was knowing that I also had that leadership, uh, in, that leadership skills inside me. They just hadn't came to fruition yet, right? And that's one of the skills that I've been working on uh, over the last two years, so just because that's the most important, it's very important, you know, uh, that way you can lead your team, not only lead them to tell them what to do, but lead them by example at the same time as well. You know? Yeah. <laughs> holding, uh, holding high regard for the, uh, for the work ethic and the hustle, you know, that saying uh, that, uh, you know, I'm going to die in the treadmill. I'm going to be the last one who, you know, to leave the room. Um, yeah, that, that's all fine and dandy, bro. But, but if that's the case, you also got to work on your cardio. So you last on that treadmill. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and what I'm trying to say is, is, um, you've done both so you you've held that high work ethic yeah. and you you worked on on your personal growth on improvement yeah. on dialing stuff in yeah. it's not just hustle 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 yeah, so yeah. it's been it's been a, yeah. a mix of a uh, hustling growth yeah uh, it was is, hard I mean, for me man because, because it, yeah it was hard for me because you know um 
if something needed to be done, man, I was like Chapulin, just jumping <laughs> like a grasshopper, <laughs> right? I would jump into it and get it done. Like, and that's, that's, that's my, that's my character. That's my personality, right? Like, let's go. But obviously to grow a business and to grow a team effectively, like you can't do that. You know what I mean? And that's mm -hmm. kind of was that, that, that was a wake up moment for me. I was definitely true. Like I know the hustle is sacred. You, but but at the same time, you know, if you do want to lead a team effectively, if you do want to lead a company effectively, like you can't be doing that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you come to a point where you have to, you know, start delegating and actually start seeing, uh, stop micromanaging is one of the biggest things in, in, in w when Correct. you're, when you're scaling, right? Um, I found out the, I found out the hard way that it, it's what you're supposed to do. Otherwise you get burned out real quick. Um, yeah. But, but with, uh, with, I think a lot of the things that or one of the biggest things that holds back from, from, from releasing that level of control is the confidence. Is the confidence mm -hmm. that we can have on ourselves as leaders, Correct. the confidence yeah. that people are going to, um, you know, do right by the vision of the company, by the purpose of whatever it is that we're doing, by the, by the yeah. problem that we're trying to solve. And, mm -hmm. and you as a leader being able to convey that, being able to, yeah. uh, to create that atmosphere, uh, you know, that's, that's what creates the, the I think yep. the, that's the glue to the whole thing. Correct. No, definitely true, man. I agree with that. Um, what would you say are the top three skills someone needs to, uh, to have or, or to dial in to be a successful entrepreneur? The, the top three skills, um, I, I, think, I think the first one would be uh, be a learner. I mean, I don't know if you would consider a learner a skill, right? Uh, you know, oh, be yeah. a learner, be a student, a student. Uh, you know, you, you, you can't stop being a student of whatever it is that you're doing, whatever, you know, whatever your path is, it doesn't necessarily have to be real estate. Um, you know, that's huge because if not, if you're not learning, you know, you're going to die basically, let's just put it that way as far as your career goes. And the second thing is that another skill would be is, you know, um, you know, develop a, a work ethic that, you know, which you can, you know, you can learn how to develop a work ethic, you know, uh, so that way, what you learn, you go into and put it in, implement it, right? Because if you learn, if you learn and learn and learn and learn and don't take action, it's worthless. So right. you can't just learn and not take action. Um, and then uh, what the third thing would be, you know, also, so, you know, learn, I think another skill would be great leadership, man. Just because you, just because you not, just because you don't have a team doesn't mean that you can have, you know, have great leadership. You got to be a great steward of your business. You got to be a great steward of the thing that you have right in front of you. Right. Uh, because if not, you're, once you grow and, and if you're not, you know, faithful in the little things, you're not going to be great in the big things. So those three things for me is like, you have to be a learner. Uh, you have to develop work ethic and then also work on your leadership skills on whatever it is. Even if you're a solo team, a solopreneur, you know, you definitely need yeah. to learn those three skills for sure. I love it, man. Uh, one of the biggest things that, that kind of, that kind of shifted my, my ability to lead was, was uh, owning or leading myself. So because yeah. you said it right, just because you don't have a team or you don't have 10 people or a staff of, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 to, to boss around, um, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that you can't be a leader. Uh, it starts with yeah. ourselves, you know, how, how yeah. big of a leader can you be on, on your own terms? Um, right. Taming your ego and doing, you know, doing what's right, building the right habits. I mean, that's, that's all part of leadership. Yeah. If you can't be a leader to yourself and your own actions, how can you yeah. go out there and, and profess to be a leader to somebody else? <laughs> no, definitely can't. Yeah, you can't. Uh, you can't lay the path out for somebody that you haven't laid the path out for yourself, you know, cause there's no way you can yeah. do that for sure. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I know we touched on this a little bit, but what's, what's your, um, what's your thought process when it comes to, to, um, to dealing with adversity, dealing with doubt? Um, as far as like, how do I approach it or just, you know uh, yeah yeah and and i guess it's it's it might be a might be a loaded question but but it's um when whenever you have something especially like right now that, you, that you're moving into bigger things and, and and you're you know definitely the reach is expanding and and yeah, yeah, you're doing yeah. a lot mm -hmm. a lot of different stuff how do you come about with dealing with that sort of thing like what do you have a thought process do you have something that you know kind of helps you out for example um i've had um the guests on the show say that you know they'll sit down and they'll do pros and cons you know straight mm -hmm. up you know very pragmatic very pragmatic kind of approach some people yeah, yeah. just you know sit with it and then feel into it and then do you yeah. have a particular thought process that helps you um yeah man clarify I, doubts yeah so i'm a very um how i want to say 
I, I'm a very vi- like a, a, I don't know if it's visual, a visual person, I guess. So I like to see things ahead of where they are. Right. So mm-hmm. a lot of times. And so what I mean by that is that, you know, like if we have a certain situation, cause obviously doubt's going to come, discouragement's going to come. Right. And so, and I like to talk to myself, man, believe it or not, <laughs> a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, they, they, and so, so what I do is I like to visualize what the situation is, right? Okay. We have this going on. And so I draw myself and, and, and I should write this down. I'm not, I don't do this very well. And I think it would help me a lot more. Uh, but what I like to do is I like, if I, I, I think about the, the adversary, the adversary, and then also the doubt that's coming in. And then what I do is I visualize, okay, I'm here at this point right now. What are the options? So then I visualize what the options are, right? Do I give up? Do I hit this? Do I, you know, reach out to somebody here? Or do I tackle this? So then I look at those outcomes. What are the three outcomes of that, right? Is, and then, you know, you, and then from there I get to decide, okay, if I go this route, it's going to be negative, right? So might as well not go that route. If I go this route, I'm going to get help. If I just get it done, then it's going to be done. And it's going to be out of the way. So for me personally, it's just thinking, it's just visualizing what the outcomes are for that doubt or for that uh, problem that you're facing at that moment. Um, and it's helped me out a lot. And, you know, I think um, it's just because uh, even going back to what I was saying earlier when we first started is when I was still working construction, like I visualized where I wanted to be at. I knew that I was going to, you know, wanted to, you know, do something better and this and that. And I, and I already had in my in my mind of what that was. And, and, you know, obviously it was still it didn't happen in the physical realm, but it's the same thing. I, I, that's the same approach that I take to problems, to doubts, because, you know, you know, believe it or not, most people, when they see you and they see your reach and they see, they think that you don't have problems. They don't, they think that you don't have adversary, right? Like everything's going fine yeah. for you. <laughs> and, and it's, and it's an everyday challenge, man. But for me, that's kind of how I tackle it for the most part. Yeah. No, I, I like it, man. It's um, it's a it's a very it's a very logical very logical approach. Um, I I tend yeah. to, for the longest time I I was uh, just you know shooting first and aiming later, and yeah, yeah. It, it gets pricey, it gets time consuming, it, it's not effective. I mean, you you have to lay it out some way somehow, you know, yeah. in a matter that that it kind of works out for you. I think it gets harder as as you grow, right? Because you know when you first start out, you're on your own, you know. And then as you go, you know, you have team members, you have people that are working underneath you. So it gets harder because now not only, and plus your family, right? They're, they're dependent on you as well. Right. So as you, as you grow and not, not, and now not only becomes about you. So you have to be very careful, be very careful on the way you react to certain things, because mm-hmm. it's not just going to impact your, you and your, your situation, but everybody else that's either underneath you or that's, that's coming along with you. It's not just you anymore for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's the difference between acting versus uh, reacting to a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, Right. So, so uh, you said something, uh, I mean, it's, it's so true. Um, Sometimes people think that, you know, uh, you guys who are in the middle of it and, you know, they're putting stuff out and and known and, and, you know, making big dents, they don't have problems or they don't have, or stuff is laid out or, oh yeah, you have it easy because this is, uh, you know, you got an opportunity that, you know, or whatever, or it was given to you. Um, right. What's, what's, the, what's the real, ma- I mean, what, what, what happens behind the scenes uh, on a regular basis for you? What, what does, for example, um, like, what does your day look like? And, and, you know, what kind of struggles do you go through? Sure. Um, so I'm big, I'm a big proponent about using the calendar, right? Um, I was actually talking to somebody about this yesterday. Um, I think, and it's something I learned. I didn't do this before, right? I think using like everything's on my calendar. So uh, everything's laid out in, and obviously the day changes, right? Things come up and some activities don't get done, but for the next day, it's still there for the most part. So, so for me, my day starts off. The first thing in the morning is I have my, my morning huddle calls with our, with our team members. And typically those calls last about 15 to 20 minutes. Just depends on, you know, what, what we got going on, what we're talking about deals and I'm also talking to my business partner, at least, uh, you know, uh, we do two, two, I think we have two, two morning huddles throughout the week. And so throughout the day, I'm just staying in touch with my team. Uh, I'm creating content, um, you know, tackling a lot of problems, you know, with files. I mean, we got one right now, as a matter of fact, that, uh, that we, that, uh, we ended up, um, uh, winning. It was, it was, uh, we, we had to go to court and stuff. So those are things that are going on. That's real life stuff, right? And things that you have to tackle. Sometimes things require attention right away and you can tackle those issues. But 
the, the thing about entrepreneurship, every single day is not the same, even though we try to maintain, you know, structure through our calendar, structure through our activities, but there's always going to be curveballs that get thrown at you. So, but, but I try to maintain some sanity by using the calendar and making sure that all our activities, like our Monday morning meetings, always there, right? Consistently every Monday, my role playing with my VAs is there every Monday and Wednesday. So those activities don't ever change. You know, they're always there mm. uh, to, you know, we meet with, uh, I meet with uh, right now, virtually, we just added two more huddles with our acquisition guys. And uh, we're, we're also, and that's twice a day. So in case there's deals that they need help with how to close. So where I'm consistently active, man, like, you know, with activities and plus everything else that gets thrown into the mix for sure. Yeah. So you haven't slowed down a bit. I mean, even, even with, with everything going on and, and we're in the middle of quarantine, I don't know when you're listening or, or watching this podcast, but right now yeah. we're in the middle of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and, and a lot of businesses have shut down a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of change going on in the economy, in the economy. Um, yeah, yeah. It sounds like you've been able to pivot your 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 strategy to to keep operating and, yeah. and stay busy. I mean, it, it it almost sounds like you've increased the level of, of of activity that's going on. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, uh, we have, um, and, and some of it has to do adjustment to the way we we communicate, right? Like through these means. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, we're not in the office, so some activities were added because of that. But definitely, man, I think we we double our activity level. Uh, and actually right before the quarantine happened, we knew that this was going, going to be this way. So we went from, I think only having two cold callers, we ramped it up to five, five mm -hmm. cold callers just to get through this, through this thing. And it's been working really well for us. Awesome. Nice, nice, nice. Um, so, uh, so what, what key activities should, uh, should businesses right now be focusing on? Um, I say, um, uh, prospecting, man. Honestly, more than ever, just because homeowners, you know, especially for our business, right? Real estate. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think even for, for business to business or other people that are, that are in other industries, prospecting because a lot of more people are available, right? They're available. Uh, you're you're, uh, you're going to basically contact more people. Uh, one of the things that I can tell you, especially for our business and wholesaling, we are having the most conversations ever right now uh, because people are home. And our pipeline has been the biggest that we've ever seen as well, too. And, and, and obviously we shift it, you know, our marketing and some of the lists that we hit, but I think pro they should, you still should be prospecting. And the reason why is because you need to have conversations. You can't start at zero when this thing opens up, like you can't just go from zero to a hundred really quick, right? No pun intended, but you know, we're, we're still having, um, we're still prospecting. We're still having conversations with homeowners, uh, even though they're not selling right now we're still on their mind. And when this thing changes, guess who's going to be that first person they're going to think about us because we've been in contact with them, you know, and, um, on what? No, no, go ahead. Yeah. And I was going to say, and, and that's huge because, you know, I, I don't know why people don't think that it's a good time to call, uh, you know, sellers, sellers still need to sell. There might be a little more hesitation. They still need, they still need help. You know, they, they, they're still going through problems. They're still going through certain situations and guess what? You're the one that has that solution for that problem. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. But one thing that I've seen um, uh, companies do and, and it's hold back, like hold back from, from example, uh, like for example, one of the avatars in our industry is, is foreclosure sales, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. The, you know, there's policy <clears throat> that, that was put into place where, where that stuff gets pushed back, but it doesn't mean that the problem itself is going to go away. Uh, so why yeah. stop marketing? I mean, it just became right. a, an issue of, of, uh, of time, not an issue mm -hmm. of, um, of need. You know, they're still going to need right. the assistance, right. the help, and it's going to be even worse, you know, by the time it gets, yeah. you know, two or three months down the road, because then you have all that stuff piled on top of, you know, what the initial problem right. was. And what happens? Yeah. You're completely right, man. If you're prospecting, you're, you're tackling, you know, whatever your industry is. If you're, you're, if you're doing whatever it takes to be, you know, the first of mind whenever that solution, you know, calls for mm -hmm. action, that's, you know, you're going to be the person they're going to call. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I agree. Like now is not the time to, to pull back. Uh, it's not the time to, um, to be, I mean, I understand there's certain things that you, you have to, you know, be cautious of, but I right. don't think a lot, at least in, 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 in our industry, like I don't think a lot has, has changed other than, you know, than, you know, maybe um, price points on, on certain things and, and stuff like that. But right. the overall process, right. I think, continues to be the same. Um, yep. 
I think like one of the things that happens a lot of the time whenever when whenever whenever chaos is instilled into into any industry is mm-hmm. is people try to overcomplicate. Yeah. Uh, my best advice right now would be to do you know, and it doesn't matter what industry you're in. Like go back to the basics. Go back. Go back to the stuff and the the yeah. thought process and the with the way of thinking that got you up and running in the first place. Correct. See what you can yeah. shift from that. Um, I yeah. mean, like those are the, I guarantee you like 90% of that is going to be the core elements that, uh, that any company in any industry right now needs, uh, and the core principles, uh, right. that, you know, companies now need to, to, uh, just get through this thing and push forward. So yeah, yeah man, no, I'm definitely. glad to hear you guys are humming. Yeah. You yeah. guys, I mean, yeah. you guys are humming, you guys, yeah. uh, saw it, you kind of, you know, prep for it and, um, yeah. and, and took action instead of reacting to, to the problems. Yeah. Yep, yep. Cool. Yeah, I mean, we, we run a very lean business, you know that. I mean, our, mm-hmm. our business is, you know, yours and mine are a lot, uh, you know, they're similar more, more than anything else, right? And we run very lean and we shift. And I mean, we went through some drastic changes too, right, with people leaving. But overall, we're still overcoming a lot of that adversity, right, that we're, that because, those, because they left. Um, we're right. still moving forward. We're still, we still haven't changed a lot of our process i mean you know besides a little bit you know tweaking our marketing here and there but we're still i mean we we're, we're still going i mean definitely we're still going hard yeah awesome um what do you uh, what do you look for uh whenever you're trying to put, uh, put together your team what what uh like i guess i don't want to say characteristics but what specifics do you look in in people when you're putting together your team yeah, yeah. Um, well, we definitely, the first thing is they got to fit the culture, right? Like, I think that's huge for us. Like, we've had people that have wanted to join the team and I've talked to them and stuff. And I, uh, that's, that's number one, because the cause company culture is huge. If you don't have a great company culture, then it's like one, you can't let one bad apple spoil the rest of the bunch, right? So right. they do have to fit the culture. Uh, that's, that's huge for us, man. And, and, you know, and, and so that's the one thing is, is, is they got to fit the culture, our core values. And then the second thing is too, is that are they, are they coachable, right? They don't have to know everything, but I think they have to be coachable. Um, because if not, if you, if you get somebody and they come into your, you know, they work for your company and it's like, they know it all, or, or, you know, they know everything you're going to have a hard time. We've, I, I've been, you know, I've, I've interviewed so many people, so I can, you know, that's the, that's the first couple of signs. Do they fit the culture? Are they coachable? Uh, you know, and so that's the main thing that we look for is that they have to be coachable. And, the, and then the last thing is, um, you know, we always tell them that uh, batteries are not included. So we're not, we're, and what, what I mean by that is that uh, we're, <laughs> I love we're, it. we're not, <laughs> we're not here to motivate you. You know what I mean? Like motivation yeah. is not something that we're here to do. You know what I mean? You have to come with batteries. <laughs> yeah, you got to be driven, man. You can't do anything if you're not driven. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I like that. I like that you guys really uphold the, the coachable aspect. I know that Steve is, he's a, like, he, he'll, he'll tell you, uh, uh, episode number two, I think it was, we talked yep. about that as well. He goes, I'm a student. I, mm-hmm. I want to be the best student. I want to remain a student. I'm always going to be a student. Uh, why? Because yeah. that's the only way I can learn and bring that knowledge back and impact people that yep. come out. Exactly. You know, it's, uh, before they even make it to the office, we, I talked to him on the phone and there's a, there's a, there's like five questions that I ask them and they're all mindset questions. Like mm-hmm. one of them is like, Hey, if you want the last, if you want a million dollars, what would you be, what, what would you do next? So our goal is just to see where their mindset is. Right. And, and so we, we don't want to hear, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go to these many vacations. I'm going to, you know, do this and that. And, and, but some of those questions, at least three out of the five are all self-development and, and, and uh, learning questions. Like, you know, what do you think about self-development? What are you currently doing for self-development? And then how much have you invested in self-development? That's really three out of the five are about self-development. So we know how coachable you are before you even make it to the office. Yeah. Mm, I love it, man. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I love it. Yep. Um, so what's, and you, you guys have, you had, you guys have a couple of different, uh, different uh, types of marketing that, you know, play into, into your model, right? Because you do have uh, real estate disruptors, uh, which is massive. And, and then you have, you know, the, the real estate investment business. So what's right, your right. approach to, uh, to marketing and, get, and getting your solutions out to the world? Um, as far as uh, uh, on the wholesale side or like, or Both. on the disruptors? Both. Both. I'm, I'm just uh, trying to connect to see if there's, there's uh, you know, similar principles on both sides. 
because they're, they're gotcha. you know, even though they're under the same umbrella, you guys do uh, manage two different industries. So you're running yeah, two different correct. businesses so, in two different industries. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think the, our, our prospect is a lot different, right? Like on our wholesale side, it's homeowner, it's, it's, it's uh, individual sellers. These aren't entrepreneurs. These aren't people that are trying to create business. Uh, you know, so basically the niche, the, the, the niche for that is a lot different than on the disruptor side where you have our, our, our prospect is somebody that wants to be entrepreneur, somebody that wants to grow their business. So we definitely have a total different uh, style of marketing on each one. Uh, for, for our wholesale side is right now what we're doing is we go, we're, right now our marketing specifically right now for the times and our shifting is that we're talking to a lot of uh, absentee out-of-state owners. And we're doing that through call, through calling and texting. That's our two marketing channels right now. Um, and obviously, we use we use a lot of the stuff we 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 teach on real estate disruptors, which is our sales training, right? Which is we're huge on, and 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 so we use that on our on our um, on our wholesaling business, and that's helped us to you know get a lot of prospects and stuff. So um, and so again, we we do cold calling, we do text messaging for the prospecting on, on the wholesale side. Uh, for the real estate disruptor side, same thing. I mean, it's all about the sales, you know, that's the kind of, we don't teach. So here's the way we look at this. We we're not teaching wholesaling per se. We're more teaching about how to develop your sales skills and how to have a business structure. Because if you want to learn about wholesaling, there's a lot of YouTube videos uh, that you can learn mm -hmm. from. And that's not the way we wanted to take that approach. I think most people that are, want to get into the business, I think they're missing We're we're trying to fill the gap of, learning how to be an entrepreneur through business structure, which Steve brings that, right? My business partner, Steve brings that, that he's, he, he brings that part to the business. And then uh, on top of that, we add the, the sales skills to it, which is a double whammy, right? Learning how to structure your business and then make sure that you're learning how to develop your sales skills to be a great salesperson, not just uh, you know, a uh, sleazy salespeople, but, uh, but have, you know, uh, uh, some type of, um, uh, what I would call standard, right? You want to have a standard. You want to make sure that you run your business correctly. So that's, and so we market to those people, um, you know, and our marketing is real simple, man. We don't spend a lot of money on marketing for that. Everything, you know, you see on Instagram, we, we put out a lot of free content and we get tons of people reaching out through that free content. Obviously we don't give everything away. Right. We save them, you know, like what's the old saying, like mastery can't give everything away. Right. <laughs> yeah. So through that, through those means we get a lot of people reach out to us and they're like, how do we join your calls? How do we get involved? And then obviously Steve gets on a call with them to do that. Yeah. Yeah. No. And for those who haven't uh, uh, listened to it yet, it's a real estate disruptors podcast. Um, yeah. And yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're completely right. I mean, the, the amount of value that you guys put out on, on, on that. And then you guys' platform, Instagram and, and um, the meetups that, that you guys have, I mean, it's, it's insane. Um, yeah. So definitely. I, I, I guess what I, what I, uh, what I caught from that is, is that, you're leading through um, pretty much you're leading your marketing strategy through value through putting out, you know, stuff that's right. actually going to help out people. And then it comes back to you one way or another. Right. That's, that's yeah, how you yeah. framed it. Exactly. Yeah. And, and one of the things that, that, um, I mean, I guess you can call them students. Um, what they like is that we're bringing real world tactical information, right? It's not based on theory. It's not based. I mean, we're learning this stuff, right? We're learning it, but we're also, we're, we're, we're putting it into, into action, right. In our own business. And I think that's the, that's where a lot of people who, who either teach or whoever, or who have students, that's the gap that they're missing, right. Is that they're actually mm -hmm. doing the business and implementing some of the strategies that they teach. So when we have our, our zoom calls, when we have our, our coaching calls on Mondays and Wednesdays and Thursdays or every other Thursday, uh, you know, we tell them like, look, here's what's going on in our business. Here's what happened last week. We had this issue. We had this problem with the seller. Here's how we brought them back to life. And so that helps them because, you know, now they're, now they're understanding that this stuff actually works, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and this stuff actually is what I'm using in my business, right? Every single day. So that's the plus side as well too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You guys, you guys are operating through uh, transparency and actually doing, doing the, uh, you're in it, yeah. not, not just, Correct. you know, speaking from, from the, uh, from the theoretical throne, part. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yep. So, uh, what is what is your your best advice for somebody who's jumping into into entrepreneurship? And, and I guess I want to take you back to 2015, 2014, when the idea. I mean, maybe the idea started kind of popping up a long time before then. But but put yourself in in, in that space, and then 
you know, what advice can you give somebody who's starting off? Yeah, man, I love this question. And so for me, honestly, it was um, networking, man. Uh, that's one mm. of the things that, you know, I was really prideful about not sounding like the dumbest one in the room, right? And so it, it held me back for a long time, uh, you know, at least for that time frame, you know, being is that in this business, and I think in entrepreneurship itself, right? I mean, I'm not going to say that everybody's willing to help you, but for the most part, there are people out there that are willing to help you. Um, you just mm -hmm. have to find the right people and who those who, who those people are. So when I first started, if I put myself back and I started over again, I think it would. It, it, I think that that's the number one thing that I would do is reach out to people, uh, look for those people that are ethical, look for those people that hold themselves to high standards, and reach out to them. And you know, and and you got to provide some value as well. I'm not just saying you know message them. Hey, can I pick your brain or this and that. And I didn't do that. That's one of the things that I didn't do very well when I first got started. Again, because of fear, you know, not not really believing in myself. But honestly, looking at it in the position I'm in now, I see that there's more people willing to help you than not. And if I would have done that when I first started, I think my career would have, you know, would have slingshot, you know, a lot faster than mm -hmm. what than you know than it, than it would have, you know, as not doing it. You know, that's the one thing that I would tell somebody. Reach out to people like Raphael. Reach out to people like myself. Message us. You know, uh, you know, we got a lot. We have in Phoenix. We're blessed to have you know a great circle of friends that are willing to help you, man. That's one of the things that stands out. So if you're out there and you're yeah. new, I recommend, man, network, 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 and don't be afraid to ask the questions. You know, to help you slingshot your career. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's insane, and you're completely right about about the uh, the culture that's been uh, being built here in Phoenix. I mean, starting yeah. starting up at the batch office with Jesse, Evil, Annie, um, you know, right. uh, Pays, Jamil, and and uh, Brent, and, and, like everybody's is willing to at least in our industry. That's the type of uh, uh, if if we've yeah. been able to create, you know that that culture in an industry as as competitive as this, it can be created yeah. in other ones. It can be created right. in, you know, in restaurants. It can be created in gyms. It can be created, and if you just, you know, think about, think about the um, the the power of, of being able to connect and elevate yeah. each other, man. It's insane, but it, sure. it, it does work that way. That's that's how it's meant to be. That's a, that's yeah, how, no, uh, I think that's how newcomers uh, thrives. So, yeah, yeah, um, no, definitely, man. Love it. So yeah, you've dropped you, you've dropped a, a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge, man. It's it's so cool to to. Um, to see the other side of Max and, 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 you know, <laughs> I appreciate it, bro. Understand yeah. when, where, you know, where the whole thing comes from. So, um, if you were walking down the street and, uh, and you ran into your 17 year old self, uh, Pace had me add this, this little section here and you only yeah, had yeah. 30 seconds to tell yourself some, you know, a piece of advice. What would it be? Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Uh, well, I think, uh, no, I would say, um, I would say, uh, the piece of advice would be like, watch out trouble ahead. Uh, and mm. that's cause you know, I, 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 uh, I, from, from, from when I was 16 all the way probably to like 21, 22, when I met my wife, it was, uh, I got into a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have got into and stuff. So I'm not going to go into too much details, but I didn't get into trouble. It was more like a lot of partying, a lot of things that I shouldn't have got into. So I would just say, watch out trouble ahead keep your head up <laughs> mm. uh, for sure i mean that's what i would i would probably tell my that 17 year old person <laughs> or 17 year old me, sorry <laughs> i love it super honest so um yeah. cool cool uh yeah so if somebody wants to get a hold of you i know you guys are you guys are doing a, a sales coaching right now and make like building closers actually you guys are awesome right. at converting and closing deals um, negotiating and and you you have a training in place going on right now. Do you, do you want to talk about that? Do you want to? Yeah. So the best way to get a hold of me is through Instagram. Obviously, I'm really active on Instagram. They can go to Max Jimenez R E I Max M A X Jimenez J I M E N E Z R E I. And so they can go there. They can message me. Um, follow me on on Instagram. And then obviously disruptors.com. That's the best. That's the website for our sales training. Disruptors.com. Uh, there's a lot of testimonial videos on there and there's a lot of free information and you could set up a call with Steve himself. Uh, so that way, if you could see if, or if you are looking to, you know, 
of fine tune your sales skills, you know, because our, our sales technique doesn't work for everybody just because it's a lot different than the standard, right? Our approach is different, but if you want to go on there and you feel like, you know, you need to change your sales skills to get better at prospecting, you're more than welcome to book a call and we'll definitely get on the phone with you to talk about that. Yep. Awesome. So there you guys have it. So uh, Real Estate Disruptors podcast, realestatedisruptors.com and Maximin is REI uh, on Instagram. You just got a backstage pass to the real, the raw, and the mind of entrepreneurship. Make sure you follow us on YouTube and iTunes and check out our website at ceopolls.com. Stay tuned, stay focused, you got this.